Hey everyone, so today we got something really exciting, a collaboration with YouTuber Albert Bozen. I'm really excited to show off the images that we've both created, and we'll both be posting time-lapse videos on our own channels. If you haven't heard of Albert, he runs a YouTube channel with a ton of fantastic content, particularly aimed around creating images using AI. He has a ton of awesome videos using stable diffusion and image to image, so it's only natural that at some point we would collaborate. So we asked everyone to pick a theme, and you decided on darkness versus light. So for this challenge, the rules are simple. The theme is darkness versus light. Albert's going to take darkness as the focus and I'm going to take light. The only model we can use is stable diffusion. The aspect ratio must be 16 by 9 and there's a one hour time limit. So when I heard the theme that I was going to be working on was light, for some reason the first thing that came to mind was the forest spirits in the film Princess Mononoke. Mythology also features a number of creatures like white stag, you know, glowing forest creatures, those kind of things. So I wanted to capture a bit of that vibe in this piece. As with most, most pieces I do, I like to start with a bit of a concept sketch just to get a sense of the composition and the kind of colours that I'm going to be working with, those kind of things. So here I wanted the forest spirit itself to be kind of central to the image and I wanted it to be large because this piece was aimed at featuring the idea of light. So in the centre of the image we have this glowing creature which is kind of like representing a forest spirit. And then to give a sense of scale, I introduced like a, a small knight on horseback. I kind of figured it would make sense if the knight was wearing dark armor, maybe riding a, like a black horse, that kind of thing, just to give contrast between the light and darkness. At the edges of the image, I sort of imagined that there'd be this kind of dark forest receding into the background. And then obviously in the center, it's illuminated by this creature. We don't really know why the knight's here. I mean, he could be there to potentially slay the creature, or it could be that he was just riding through the forest and kind of, sort of came across this forest spirit. Or perhaps he's even come to the forest spirit to ask it for something. So I quickly jumped into stable diffusion then. So rather than using image to image, which and doing multiple passes like a normal workflow that I would do, I figured that I'd give it a chance with text to image. The idea was to try and create something that was at least kind of similar to what I wanted and then hopefully I could use parts of those images to build something up quickly. So in this case I sort of added to the prompt some keywords like ancient beast, long legs. I thought giraffe might work because the shape like silhouette of the creature that I created was sort of giraffe like. Obviously the, the, I said mentioned deer like golden horns. I wanted there to be kind of large ornate horns and then standing in the forest pool of reflective water. I also added the quality keyword highly detailed and then just I just bumped up the strength a little bit of that one because I wanted an image that evoked a lot of detail um, particularly in the forest and in the background. So I started spitting out some images. Um, one of the advantages of having a decent graphics card is that I can do batches of 12 pretty quickly. Um, I mean, I wasn't blown away by the images that I was getting, but they had enough elements that I thought I could probably start photo bashing something together in Photoshop. So I switched across to Photoshop in a second, but then while at the same time I hit generate to create a batch without the giraffes, just so that I had a background to work with. So as you can see in Photoshop, I just quickly picked through some of the images that I liked. I, had a, I think I had around 36 to work with, so three batches of 12. So the plan I had was really just to grab a bunch of pieces that kind of worked and then quickly photo bash them together into something kind of resembling the sort of image I wanted. kind of happy with, I mean it was, it was really rough at this stage. I uh, dropped it back into stable diffusion but this time using image to image. Um, reduced the denoising strength a fair bit and then ran, ran it through again. 
The idea for this is really so that I've got something that I can use to then blend the image back in because running it through image to image will, will kind of basically cover up a lot of the blemishes and the rough kind of uh, masking that I did. I also use the DDIM sampler at 40 steps just because I like the way that it adds a bit more detail to the output. As you can see, Image to Image did a pretty good job of kind of smoothing it out. Some of the details kind of got lost or I wasn't that happy with from some of the renders, so I just combined the best bits of a few uh, just to create like a composite image from, from the best passes, but overall it made a huge difference to the image. The next piece of the tackle was the night in the foreground. So basically I just grabbed the original sketch that I did, uh, pasted it back onto the background and then just adjusted a little bit, moved it around. I had to move it around mainly so it wasn't just standing in a bush. Now it was just straight back into uh, stable diffusion. Um, I hadn't loaded the in-painting model so I just brushed in where I wanted to in-paint it and then just paused to take a quick break. So. When I came back, the, there was a few generations that I could look at, um, but I wasn't really that happy with half of them. The horse wasn't even facing in the right direction. So I adjusted the strength a little bit and kind of got some okay-ish results. I wasn't super happy with it, but but honestly, it could have spent like a long time doing more and more passes and it just wasn't worth the time. And obviously it's a small element, so it is what it is. Um, as you can see, some of the horse's legs are a little bit so here I was starting to get really stretched for time, but I wanted to show out a technique that I've been using quite a lot lately. So I dropped back in the image that I had and just cropped it down into the night. But then I reduced at the top the in-paint conditioning mask strength. So there's a quick setting that you can add which exposes this and it's only available for the in-painting model. The cool thing about it is if you drop it down and then increase the strength, you can basically um, produce something that has the same composition but with a lot more detail. Normally when you increase the strength, particularly to high levels, you actually completely overwrite your original composition. But this allows you to keep that while at the same time increasing this sort of artistic strength of the output. I did a video about this a few days ago if you're kind of interested in this new setting that um, is now available. Back in Photoshop I just grabbed one of the earlier renders that I did of the deers and there was one with this, this relatively coherent deer. Um, so I essentially grabbed that and threw it in because I just felt like that side of the image was lacking. Um, but I just really didn't have any time at this point so I did a really rough job of um, masking it out and just used curves where I could to kind of sort of blend it together. My hope was really that when I ran a final pass the whole thing would blend together a bit better. So back in Stable Diffusion, I dropped the conditioning mask strength back down to zero, bumped up the strength and then just ran a pass over the image. Um, unfortunately I forgot to set the width so I had to do another pass, but essentially what that did is uh, just really boosted the detail um, and then I just picked a couple of those outputs and then masked that back over in Photoshop, just avoiding some of the details that got lost if, um, if I wasn't happy with them. Here it is, the final image. Overall I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. There are a ton of details I would have added if I had more time. In the end, as it was, I ended up running over by about 4 or 5 minutes. I would have liked to add some fireflies and other glowing forest spirits just to kind of really sell the theme. But I'm happy at least I got across the image that I originally had in mind. So here's Albert's take on the theme of darkness. I was really impressed by this image and probably not for the reason you'd expect. The main one was hands. I mean I can't believe that he tried to tackle this kind of image in such a short amount of time. So it's pretty incredible what he managed to achieve and I think it turned out really really nice. If you haven't already seen it, make sure you head over to Albert's channel to check out his video. As usual his video contains a ton of interesting tips and tricks as well as detailed explanations of how he did what he did.